When you think about e-commerce in China, the first names that come to mind are Alibaba and its founder Jack Ma. I have dedicated a video to the latter that I invite you to watch. However, the daily life of Chinese people who do their shopping on their mobile is much more often punctuated by another player, unknown in the West, JD.com. The founder of this company, Richard Leo, may be less exuberant than Jack Ma, but his background is no less exceptional. Born into a very modest family, a brilliant student, he managed to build in 20 years a giant weighing $32 billion on the stock market and employing 300,000 people. If one were to look for a common thread in Richard Leo's career, it would be an incredible ability to turn the most catastrophic situations into opportunities for success. Richard Leo is a kind of business alchemist, able to turn lead into gold. This is what I'm going to tell you in this video, while noting a few lessons that can inspire each of us. Richard Leo, Mandarin Chinese, Leo Changdong, was born on February 14, 1974, near the city of Suqian, in the Jiangsu province. His grandparents were wealthy traders in the early 20th century, but his luck changed, and when he was born, his parents were simple rice farmers. While his parents were at work, his maternal grandmother took care of little Richard. She taught him to make the most of what he was given. Richard would help her prepare meals with what they could afford, usually simple sweet potato or corn dishes. However, on very special occasions, Richard would accompany his grandmother to the nearest farmer's cooperative where she would get the fattest piece of pork possible. This way, when the meat was cooked, there was plenty of fat left over that could be used to cook other foods throughout the year. Lesson number one, make the most of what you have. When Leo was old enough to go to university, in 1992, his excellent grades in the Gaokao, the high school graduation exam, allowed him to enter the prestigious People's University in Beijing, where he studied sociology. But by the turn of the 1990s, China had entered a period of economic crisis and stagnation, making opportunities in this field scarce. On the other hand, as the country continued to modernize, the need for IT skills was enormous, and qualified people were hard to find. So Leo decided to learn computer programming on his own. Thanks to this, he was able to save enough money to buy his own computer and cell phone, both very expensive at the time. Lesson number two, no one to retrain. With the savings he accumulated from his computer programming business, Leo opened a restaurant at the entrance of his university. Unfortunately, his lack of management experience combined with a form of naivety caused him to put blind trust in his employees, who quickly took advantage of him. Not only did they falsify expense reports, but they even dipped directly into the cash register, and the restaurant went bankrupt within a year. Despite this, Leo didn't keep any bitterness about the experience, but only kept a taste for entrepreneurship and a good lesson. This will be very useful to him, a few years later, to create his e-commerce company. Lesson number three, learn from your mistakes and don't get discouraged. After graduating from People's University in 1996, Leo enrolled in an EMBA program at the China Europe International Business School so that he could continue his studies while pursuing his business ventures. What is remarkable here is that Richard Leo was able to balance his education with learning to be an entrepreneur. Even though there were no openings in the field he had chosen to study in university, he went ahead with his studies. And then, he completed them with another training, more directly related to his professional project. In this, he is opposed to many school dropouts, often put forward, such as Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg, who abandoned their studies along the way. Lesson number four, don't pit education against starting a business. To put his new knowledge into practice and gain management experience, Leo went to work for Japan Life, a natural health supplement giant, where he worked his way up to IT manager. By being an employee himself and then working in a management position at a large company, Leo was able to learn good business management practices that would serve him well later when he was his own boss again. Lesson number five, do not oppose salaried employment and business creation. In June 1998, Leo embarked on a new entrepreneurial venture by setting up a store, Jing Dong, in a tiny booth in Beijing's computer district. For the record, he created the name of his business from his first name, Qiang Dong, and that of his then-girlfriend, Xiao Jing. 
Unlike the many shops in the area that often sold counterfeit products at negotiable prices, Leo refused to haggle, but guaranteed reliable and authentic products in return. By sticking to this policy, Leo managed to grow his business rapidly within a few years. In just five years, Jingdong became a full-fledged storefront, before growing into a chain of 12 stores in Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenyang, with annual sales of about $9 million. Lesson number six, staying true to your principles and serving the consumer is a key to success. Jingdong could have gone on its merry way and been a chain store like so many others. But history had other plans. In 2003, the SARS health crisis broke out, forcing many companies, including Jingdong, to stop welcoming customers. Rather than seeing this as a hindrance, Leo took the opportunity to develop his business in a new way by starting to offer his products for sale on online forums. This initiative was so successful that Leo decided to keep a dedicated online sales employee, even after Jingdong was allowed to reopen its stores. In January 2004, Leo officially launched an online version of Jingdong, and after a year, he decided that Jingdong would now sell its products only on the internet. Lesson number 7. With the right attitude, you can sometimes turn what at first seems like a disaster into an extraordinary opportunity. Taking advantage of his self-training and computer experience, which he had acquired a few years earlier, Leo wrote the code for the first version of Jingdong.com himself. Sleeping in his office, answering all the questions his new online customers asked him, he even hand-delivered all the orders for a while. This relentless involvement allowed him to learn a great deal about the new type of customer that online shoppers were, at a time when modern targeting and audience measurement technologies did not yet exist. Even today, as the head of a multi-billion dollar company, Leo makes it a point to work, one day a year, as a delivery boy, so that he never falls into the trap of being disconnected from the market or from his employees' daily lives. Lesson number 8. Get your hands dirty and never lose your sense of reality, nor contact with the field. With the rise of e-commerce in China, and the presence of strong competitors, such as Alibaba, it was crucial for JD.com, the new name of the company, and for the Jingdong website, to continuously differentiate themselves, and stay ahead of the game in terms of service quality. In this context, Leo realized that there was no logistics company in China that could deliver to every corner of the country. While China's population was still largely rural, people in more remote areas could not enjoy the benefits of e-commerce and were forced to travel to the big cities to buy electronic devices. That's why Leo insisted that JD build its own domestic logistics system. By the end of 2014, JD had deployed 3,210 delivery and pickup points in 1,862 Chinese counties, nearly two-thirds of all counties in the country. This effort has not only significantly increased JD's number of potential customers, but also enabled it to innovate in the logistics field, gaining a lead that its competitors would find hard to catch up with. Lesson number 9. Take into account the specificities of your local market to best serve your customers, get ahead, and block new entrants. Leo's foresight and efforts in cutting-edge innovations in areas as diverse as logistics, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and robotics have helped JD.com consolidate its position as China's leading e-commerce company. But Leo doesn't want to stop there. On the occasion of its 17th anniversary in 2020, JD.com announced an update of its mission and positioning. JD.com is now presenting itself, not just as an e-tailer, but as a supply chain services and technology company. In other words, just as Alibaba was able to leverage its data center management skills to become a cloud leader, JD aims to leverage its logistics expertise in more than just e-commerce. Lesson number 10. Don't rest on your laurels and constantly reinvent yourself. Here is now a short summary of the 10 key lessons we can learn from Richard Leo's journey. 1. Make the most of what you have. 2. No one to retrain. 3. Learn from your mistakes and don't get discouraged. 4. Don't pit education against starting a business. 5. Do not oppose salaried employment and business creation. 6. Staying true to your principles and serving the consumer is a key to success. 7. With the right attitude, 
you can sometimes turn what at first seems like a disaster into an extraordinary opportunity. 8. Get your hands dirty, and never lose your sense of reality, nor contact with the field. 9. Take into account the specificities of your local market, to best serve your customers, get ahead, and block new entrants. 10. Don't rest on your laurels, and constantly reinvent yourself. How will JD.com continue to surprise its customers in the markets? Only time will tell. What is certain, is that it will be exciting to continue to follow Richard Leo's journey in the coming years. From your side, what do you remember about Richard Leo's career that is particularly remarkable? Do you think you will be as universally recognized as Jack Ma tomorrow? Don't hesitate to tell me about your predictions in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumb. It's a great encouragement for me. See you soon on this channel.